presentation is actually taken from a journal uh, which was uh, published uh, by the Bangladesh Medical College. And uh, when she presented uh, to that uh, obstetrics and gynecology department, she presented with the complaints of uh, something coming out of the vagina, uh, called vagina for a period of last 10 years. So that was quite a chronic complaint that she persistently felt that there is something coming out of the vagina for the period of last 10 years. That uh, uh, complaint was initially restricted to that feeling of um, having a mass coming out of the vagina. But later on, as the age proceeds uh, further and as this uh, complaint also uh, proceeded further. Uh, so she also developed a foul smelling uh, discharge for vagina uh, that was uh, uh, lasted that lasted for a period of about two months. And now this uh, discharge, which was initially uh, yellowish or white in color, it becomes blood stained. And uh, this blood stained uh, discharge was coming out for vagina. Uh, for a period of last 15 days. Um, also, this um, um, feeling of a mask coming down for vagina and this for foul smelling discharge, this was also accompanied by a lower abdominal pain. And that lower abdominal pain was, uh, uh, was for the period of last uh, five days. Now, this uh, lower abdominal pain was uh, crampy in nature and it was uh, persistent in its occurrence. And um, she was uh, feeling more, the pain was more aggravated during the process of the screening. That is uh, when she, uh, uh, urgency, when, when she urges to go to washroom for urination or for the defecation. So that, lower, that is the time when the lower abdominal pain, the cramp lower abdominal pain, it was aggravated. Otherwise, it was a it was of mild intensity and it was persistent in its occurrence, but it was occurring continuously. Okay. Now, when this uh, um, person, when this patient was inquired further, and then a uh, history of uh, a complete history of presenting uh, illness was taken, so she told that she was normal tensing. It means that she did not have got any problems of hypertension or hypertension, she was normal tensive and she was non-diabetic. She did not have got any raised blood sugar levels at that time, at the time of presentation. Uh, and when the uh, history of uh, the mass coming out of the vagina, it was inquired further. So she told that the prolapsed mass was initially of a very small size. Initially, it was about the size of a pea and uh, then it gradually um, increased in size and now it has become uh, so much bigger that it has almost completely obstructed the entire vaginal orifice. So the prolapsed mass was initially of a smaller size at the time of development, but as the age advances, as the, the time is uh, uh, progressed further, it gradually increased in its size and now it is completely obstructing the uh, vaginal orifice. Uh, for that particular uh, case, when we have cases of cases with, uh, with complaints regarding, the, uh, uh, regarding something related to the uh, vaginal orifice, so a uh, definite history regarding the uh, gravity of the patient, it needs to be asked. So she told that she was a mother of 10 children, okay? So she was a multi gravida multi gravida hum kab label karte a female is being labeled as multi gravida when she de de delivers or when she uh, becomes pregnant for uh, more than twice okay jab do dafa se zyada koi female she, de she becomes pregnant uh, so that lady is being labeled as multi gravida so she was a grand multi gravida, grand multi gravida, more than five pregnancies. A female is being labeled as grand multi gravida. So it's because she was a mother of 10 children, so definitely she was a grand multi gravida. And all of the children, they were born for vaginally, they were normal vaginal deliveries for all of these uh, 10 children. 
she doesn't give any history regarding her uh, miscarriages. Um, might be possible that during this time period, the, the birth of the 10 uh, healthy born or alive children, there might be some chances of having uh, miscarriages, but she doesn't give any history regarding her miscarriages. She just told uh, the clinician that she was a mother of 10 children, and all of them were born for vaginally or through the normal vagina period. Now, this is the thing that is very important in this particular case. Okay, she was a mother of 10 children, and all of them were delivered for vaginal. Uh, she was uh, a menopausal woman, and she has got uh, a menopause which uh, happened about 15 years ago. And uh, also, she has got a history of uh, on and off, she has got a history of uh, dry cough. That dry cough was um, non purulent uh, kisi ki sabtaas no koi discharge nahi tha, uh, but uh, that happens on and off. Uske saath us ne kisi or uh, they were weren't any uh, factor that was associated with, with it, like uh, any um, sweating, uh, the whole sweats or any uh, night fever that was associated with dry cough. Uh, she only uh, gave the history of a persistent dry cough that happened uh, for a period of about five to six years and it was one and a half. Okay? So this was the history of her presenting illness uh, when she was employed further. Then on examination, when the examination was done for that particular female, she appeared to be very ill looking. She has got a grossly dynamic appearance and she was anxious and nervous in her appearance, okay? Um, dynamic appearance, um, uh, when you are sitting in a clinical setup and you grossly look at the face of uh, or a general appearance of a patient, so grossly the paleness in the eyes, that's the sclera of the eye, uh, yeah, facial uh, skin, you have a grossly up to pale appear, or yeah, if you look for the color of the nails, they appear pale, and you look for the uh, color of the skin of the palm. So, these are the four particular things just to more jelly, take up, say, take a second gross examination, cuper, and with that, uh, you label uh, that, the, uh, that the affected uh, person or the Patient is enamored in, in her uh, looks. Okay, uh, so grossly she was ill looking. She was anxiously uh, uh, looking for. Uh, she has got a nervous uh, face, and uh, grossly she appeared to be an enamored uh, person. Then, when the examination was done, particularly of that prolapsed um, uh, mass or a mass coming out of the vagina. Uh, the principal complaint was the examination. Yeah. So, what the clinician saw, she saw uh, a prolapsed, prolapsed mask that was uh, partly distorted, that was not in a good condition. That mask was distorted in its appearance. Uh, that was uh, edematous. There was the edema of the mask as well as the, uh, the uh, side uh, tissues. Or the jovius uh, kisat attached to structures, they will be edgy and the mass was hard and it was irreducible. Okay, now consistency of the mass and reducibility are two important things which need to be um, addressed in any uh, type of the uh, 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 any type of the mass which is coming out through a natural or of this. Uh, that these are the two things that need to be uh, addressed and they need to be carefully taken upon. Uh, the hardness um, of the mass, it uh, indicates the underlying tissue, what type of tissue it is. And reducibility is basically, okay, uh, what, what exactly do we mean by the word reducible and irreducible? Reducible masses are those you know, uh, if they are being uh, reduced and they go back to their normal position once the uh, strain is being taken off. Normally, what I can do is this is kind of the cases of them. Yeah, my first hernia cases are then after generally hernia example they think. So, what I can do hernia patients go, you ask the subject to either strain or to cough. 
जब कफ करता है सब्जेक्ट या जो स्ट्रेन करते हैं तो वो जो नेचुरल ऑर्फिस होता है उसके थ्रू जो हाइनेटिव कॉन्टेक्ट होता है इट बल्जेस आउट ओके इट बल्जेस आउट थ्रू द नेचुरल ऑर्फिस same happens in case of the uh, of the prolapsed uterus uh, that if uh, you ask the subject to um, uh, to give the strain the mass which comes out of the uh, natural orifice which is definitely the vaginal orifice in this particular case but this was an irreducible mass if uh, even she was not straining even she was not cupping uh she has got a completely prolapsed uterus outside the vaginal orifice and that type of mass is being labeled as the irreducible mass so reducibility is a feature which shows uh, the chronicity of the uh, mass okay jitna zyada mass chronic hota jayega uh, it becomes irreducible while in the earlier stages uh, of the hernia the mass it goes back to its normal position once the strain is being taken off so that mass was uh, the prolapsed structure tha the prolapsed mass tha it was it was distorted it was not in a good condition it was adulterous it seems to be infectious in its appearance it was completely hard in its consistency and it was irreducible in its nature that mass was uh, completely being uh, surrounded and it was um, uh, enveloped by a very uh, profuse and a very foul smelling discharge that discharge uh, according to the patient it was initially um, dirty white in color uh, but as the case was progressed further and the things were not in a good condition the mass was not in a good condition that mass it become, that uh, discharge it becomes blood stained okay so on examination what were the gross findings uh, that the patient was grossly ill looking she was anxious she appeared to be pale in her skin um, that's why she was being labeled as an inanimate person and when the uh, prolapsed mass was examined it was not in a good condition it seems to be in patches with having adenoidal surfaces um distorted in its appearance and it was hard in its consistency and it was irreducible with completely being enveloped by a blood stain and a very foul smell uh discharge coming out for vision okay so is it clear till now is there anything that you want to discuss right now कोई ऐसी टर्मिनोलॉजी हो जो आपको समझ में ना आए हो बिकॉज इन केसेस पर्टिकुलरली टर्मिनोलॉजीज सो इज देर एनीथिंग दैट यू नीड टू गेट क्लियर हेयर कम ऑन क्विकली रिप्लाई मी इन द चेक बॉक्स एडिमेटर्स एडिमेटर्स का मतलब होता है ग्रॉसली स्वेलिंग अपियरेंस ओके एडिमा जैसे टिश्यू एडिमा होता है Uh, it means that the mass was grossly uh, has got a swelling, a swelling appearance, as well as those with other associated soft tissues. They they were also edematous and they were also uh, swelled up in its appearance. Okay. So moving on further, um, then uh, uh, she was investigated for the. जो बेसलाइन इन्वेस्टिगेशन थी वो की गई उसकी देर वॉज अ नॉर्मल ब्लड शुगर लेवल्स देर नॉर्मल उसका एज बी ए वन सी किया दैट वॉज परफेक्टली नॉर्मल द इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स वर नॉर्मल बट द ओनली थिंग दैट वॉज समॉट डिस्ट्रेंज वॉज दैट वॉज अ कम्प्लीट ब्लड पिक्चर दैट इज सी बी सी द कम्प्लीट ब्लड काउंट i would rather say uh so her uh, hemoglobin uh, percentage was 8.9 uh, grams per deciliter which is quite a low weight and she was having a uh, neutrophilic lymphocytosis there was an increase in the wbc count and that wbc count has got is specifically the neutrophils they were raised and increase in the count of neutrophils it indicates an acute infection is happening inside the body okay or the body ke andar kahi pe bhi koi acute infection hoga to neutrophilic lymphocytosis hoga okay 
Um, so the neutrophilic lymphocytosis was suggesting that she was having an acute infection, which was definitely being evident on the uh, examination of the prolapsed mass. And also she has got a raised ESR, that is erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is also a test, which is basically a feature uh, or a sign of uh, an infection occurring anywhere inside the body. So both of these uh, features, that is uh, the neutrophilic leukocytosis and the raised ESR, that's erythrocyte sedimentation rate, both of them were suggested that the patient was suffering from an acute infection and that acute infection was happening inside um, and that prolapsed mass. Um, she undergone into uh, the uh, radiological examinations as well, which uh, shows that uh, part of the uterus or the uterus, you can say, it has been descended out of its position. It has left its normal and identical position. It has descended downward, and the diagnosis of uh, uterine prolapse was finally made. Okay. So this was a case of uterine prolapse that was uh, being published in a Bangladeshi journal. And uh, she was also a native uh, citizen of Bangladesh. Now, uh, going for the treatment options, the, because the condition of the prolapse mass was not uh, in favor of going at immediate surgical repair. Because the size of the mass was so big, uh, and almost the entire uterus was coming out for vaginally. So definitely there was a need for the surgery. Surgical repair is a real thing. It's a definitive cure without a surgical um, uh, correction. But that surgery, when surgery is planned, there are multiple factors which you need to keep in your mind. That way, whether the uh, prolapsed mass is in uh, favorable conditions of undergoing surgery. So this was in the case with this particular female. Uh, because the mass was grossly infectious, or let's say the investigations may they have revealed, they have confirmed that the patient was suffering from acute infection. So initially a conservative approach was being uh, applied, and later on it was followed by the surgical repair. Initial conservative management was uh, to, to treat the infection, to make the mass somewhat soft in consistency, and to make it reducible. The team purpose the um, initial conservative uh, management came only thing to make uh, the mass, um, you know, infection free, uh, to make uh, it soft in its consistency, and to uh, make it reducible in nature. And all of the three things, they were achieved when the mass was treated conservatively. Conservative treatment kya tha? That the patient was asked, she was being hospitalized for a couple of days and um, a continuous uh, 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 no, no skin, no skin for bandage applied to the prolapse mass tha. She was uh, given a high dose of the third generation cephalosporins which are very good in treating any sort of the vaginal infection. The vaginal infections of the interior, particularly the third generation cephalosporin, they are very good. Okay? They are active against the, uh, there are multiple different strains of the bacteria, didn't come broadly wrong, gram positive or gram negative bacteria, label cutting, but that's beyond the scope of uh, your studies now. Uh, but uh, broadly enough to tell you that there is a very big, big group of uh, medicine antibiotics, uh, which are which comes under the heading of the third generation cephalosporin, and they are very they have got a very good effect on this type of the infectious cases, particularly related to the vaginal infections in females. So she was given uh, the third generation cephalosporins and high dose. And uh, there was a continuously application of ice packing over the affected site. Uh, a bandage was being applied and it was cleaned. The moon was, the, the mask was cleaned daily. Uh, uske baad pe, for she didn't get hospitalized for a couple of days. Uske baad uska mask to ka, it becomes uh, infection free. It becomes soft in its consistency. The edema of the uh, associated tissues was uh, reduced. Um, very much, 
and it becomes reducible in nature. Uh, only when the patient applies a strain, the mask was collapsed out of the vaginal orifice, otherwise it was kept inside the, um, inside the vaginal cavity. So these were the features that showed that the patient has improved clinically. Or later on, uh, that all treatment was followed by the surgical approach. And uh, she undergone a very major uh, type of the surgical procedure, that is the vaginal hysterectomy. Vaginal hysterectomy is uh, the removal of the uh, uterus. The word hysterectomy means removal of the uterus. And vaginal hysterectomy, uh, it means that there was a removal of the uterus through the vaginal orifice. The hysterectomy, which can take place for abdominally as well as through the vaginal orifice. But this particular case, in this particular case, since the mass was propelling out of the uh, vaginal orifice, there was the surgical, therefore, the surgical approach was being made through the uh, through the uh, vaginal orifice and the uterus was being removed completely through this uh, vaginal orifice along with the repair of the pelvic floor. Pelvic floor repair the surgical procedure is being done side by side along with the vaginal uh, hysterectomy in which the muscles which are actually forming the pelvic floor. We are later on perineum portion where we start to go in the reproductive module. So basically, there are uh, certain muscles. There is a fascia of the pelvis and the muscles of the pelvis, which basically are responsible for giving the strength to the pelvic floor. Or pelvic floor ke andar structures structures are Pelvic floor ke andar there is presence of the urethral orifice. There is presence of the uh, of the vaginal orifice, and there is presence of the um, anal orifice. All these three natural orifices, they are located within the pelvic floor, they are located within the perineum specifically, and the muscles of the pelvis and the fascia of the pelvis is basically responsible for giving strength to this pelvic floor. So repair of the pelvic floor is a type of the surgical procedure where a strength is being given off to the uh, pelvic floor muscles as well as to the uh, surrounding structures, there are you know, multiple different phases only, okay, but that's uh, beyond your course. But just you need to keep your in your mind that pelvic floor uh, repair, it means giving strength to the muscles and the fascia, which is actually responsible for forming the uh, pelvic floor and the perineum. So, a side by side surgery was being done uh, along with the removal of the uterus through the vaginal orifice. And um, uh, that is how the patient was treated surgically. She was kept under observation for uh, 48 hours post surgery. And then she was uh, shifted to uh, a room. And then she was discharged on uh, seventh day post operatively. She was doing perfectly uh, fine when she was discharged. Her uh, uh, urine was fastened normally. She was defecated normally. Uh, her appetite was normal, grossly her appearance was normal, and she was pain free on further inquiring her. So that is uh, about the uh, treatment and how that uh, the patient was being treated. Okay, now I want all of you to please raise your hands so that you get your attendance mark. All of you, please raise your hand in order to get your attendance mark. Now, coming to the discussion regarding the uh, regarding the presence in the Okay, what exactly do we mean by uh, prolapse? or specifically the uterine prolapse. Prolapse is basically a general word which is used for the downward descent or downward displacement of any genital organ through a natural orifice which is located inside the pelvic floor. 
As I have told you that the Calvary floor has got three natural orifices, that is the urethral orifice, the vaginal orifice, and the anal orifice. Now, a genital organ, it definitely passes on through, or it is descended uh, through a natural orifice, which is the vaginal orifice. Similarly, there could be a herniation of uh, an abdom abdominal contact or an intestinal contact to be more specifically said uh, through the anal orifice. Anal orifice can through put intestinal contact to the bulge out for supply. Similarly, jo, um, genital contact that it bulges out through the vaginal orifice in case of injuries. So that is uh, uh, called as the prolapse, a downward descent or a downward displacement of a genital structure through a natural orifice which is located inside the pelvic floor or within the perineum. Basically, the prolapse side, it is also a type of hernia. Hernia is uh, labeled as the uh, abnormal um, bulging out of the uh, abnormal bulging out of uh, some content which is located either in the abdominal cavity or in the pelvic cavity through a natural orifice. Okay, so this is a form of hernia. This uterine prolapse is also a herniation of the uterus through the vaginal orifice. So we can say that it's a form of hernia. And why does this herniation occur? This herniation basically occur because of the uh, weakness. This weakness can be a uh, mechanical weakness. And uh, this, this is basically a, a muscular weakness, which is responsible for producing the mechanical um, disturbances as well as the functional disturbances. Um, mechanical disturbances, we can say the mechanical cup patient disturbed yoga because the patient is not able to um, restrain properly. Uh, and there is a continuous feeling of uh, uh, a continuous, you can say, discomfort uh, while sitting down uh, during the sitting position, that something, a feeling of something or a bulging coming out of the vagina, vaginal orifice, that makes the most uh, difficult part of the uh, case. Okay, so this uh, uh, happens because of the muscle weakness, which is actually responsible for giving the strength to the uh, pelvic floor, and they get weakened inside, and they are responsible for collapsing the uterus to the vaginal orifice. Uh, there are certain factors which are generally uh, responsible for uh, maintaining the uterus at its normal position. As you have done the raw features of the uterus, you must be uh, very well aware of the fact that there is a certain position which is being adopted by the uterus, and that position <clears throat> Is called as the antiverted and anti flex. Uh, please mute yourself. All of you, please mute yourself and you can now drop down your hands. Okay? You can please drop down your hands and you can mute yourself. Uh, so, um, the uterus, uh, it has got a naturally uh, occurring position which is responsible for maintaining. Uh, or for giving the strength uh, to its uh, normal position, and that is the antiverted and anti flexed uterus. Now, what do exactly we mean by the word antiverted and anti flexed? Antiversion is basically both of them are the types of angulation. An angle is being maintained between the long axis of the um, cervix and the body of the uterus. And an angulation is being maintained between the long axis of the uh, vaginal canal and the cervical canal. Both of them are canals. The cervix is also a canalicular structure. The vagina is also a canalicular structure. So both of these structures, they maintain uh, an angulation between their long axis. Antiverted is that angle. Please, one of you, look carefully in the picture where you would be able to appreciate the angle of antiversion. Now, this angle of antiversion is the one which is being formed between the long axis of the cervical canal and the vaginal canal. Okay? This is this blue line is actually showing the, uh, the vaginal canal, the axis of the vagina. This red colored line is showing the uh, cervical canal and the angle which is being maintained between the long axis of these two 
uh, pronounced is called at the angle of antiversion and it is exactly at 90 degrees. It's a uh, line at located in a horizontal line at a vertical line at cubic to administrative crossover cutting at and they are maintaining an exact angle of about 90 degrees. Uh, then there is another angle which is being present and this angle is present between the long axis of the body of the uterus that is the uterine cavity to be more specifically to say. So uterine cavity ka jo long axis hota hai wo and the uh, long axis of the cervical canal. They also maintain an angle and this angle is uh, somewhat more obtuse in its nature and it is about at a degree of uh, it, 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 there is a variable range between this uh, uh, between these two structures between the long axis of these two structures and uh, that ranges from about 120 to 170 degrees okay now this angle is called as the angle of anti flexion major angulation cell which is uh, being maintained between the long axis of the body of the uterus or the uterine uh, cavity between the long axis of the cervical canal and between the long axis of the vaginal canal these angulations that they are responsible for maintaining the uterus at its normal position that is antiverted and anti-flexed uterus this uterine position is not only helping in uh, maintaining the uterus at its uh, normal in atrical position, but it also helps a help, uh, helps a woman to get pregnant more easily. Okay, nature ne kuch is tarike se uterus ko rakha hua hai. It is being uh, uh, you know present inside the uh, inside the uh, pelvic cavity in such a way, in such an angulation that uh, in this particular uh, uh, with this particular uh, angulation. It is easier for a female to get pregnant. Okay. Um, now these uh, two axes are important in maintaining the uh, uh, uterine position. Other than that, there is also a ligamentous support. We have got uh, a rich ligamentous support which is surrounding the uterine uh, cavity and the cervical canal from all three directions. That is, they are giving the strength, the, uh, the, the ligaments are giving the strength to uh, the uterus from the anterior aspect, from the posterior aspect, as well as from sidewards. Okay? So uh, this uh, uh, cervical canal, to be more exactly said, or the lower part of the uh, uterine cavity, they are uh, being surrounded by a number of ligaments. And these ligaments are named as pubo-cervical ligament. There is transverse cervical ligament, which is also called as the cardinal ligament, which is basically the major support to the uterus, which is responsible for keeping the uterus at its normal position. And also, uh, there is uh, a ligament which is called as the uterosacral ligament. Now, pubo-cervical ligament is the one which is basically uh, responsible for uh, giving strength to the anterior aspect of the uh, uterus. The anterior wall of the uterus it gets strengthened by the uh, pubo-cervical ligament. This is the ligament which basically extends from the anterior aspect of the uh, cervix uh, to the, and the upper part of the vagina and the fibers they get diverged and they are uh, they go anteriorly and they are going to be attached to the posterior surface of the pubic synthesis. Uh, the exactly pubic synthesis ki jo posterior surface hoti hai, waha pe ja ke ye attach ho ja ke. That is the pubo cervical ligament. Pubo cervical ligament which is extending from the uh, from the uh, posterior uh, surface of the pubic synthesis to the um, uh, to the anterior wall of the uterus. Uh, to the cervix and the upper part of the vagina. Then we have got two lateral bands of ligaments which are called as the transverse cervical or the cardinal ligaments. They are the major or the basic uterine support. They are being given off from the transverse cervical ligament. Now what are these transverse cervical ligaments? The transverse cervical ligament, they are basically thickenings of the endopelvic fascia. The deep fascia hota hai, uh, I have told you in the classes that the deep fascia hota hai, it undergoes modification and it goes to different parts of the body. 
Um, so in case of the pelvic cavity, um, or jab hum pelvis ke baare mein specifically baat kare, to here the deep fascia it also undergoes a type of modification. It becomes thickened enough. The fascia over here is called as the endopelvic fascia, and it undergoes thick into a thickened bands, uh, which are called as the which are basically uh, the ligamentous bands. और ये जो लिगमेंट है ये साइड वॉल्स ऑफ द यूट्राइन कैविटी के साथ अटैच होता है और उसके बाद दिस लिगमेंट इट हैज गॉट ऑफ इट इट हैज गॉट अ फैन आउट पैटर्न ये स्पैन आउट होता है इसके जो फाइबर्स है वो लेटरली डिस्पर्स्ड हो जाते हैं एंड दे आर गोइंग टू बी अटैच टू द लेटरल पेल्विक वॉल्स सो दिस इज द ट्रांसवर्स सर्वाइकल और द कार्डिनल लिगमेंट दिस इज द लिगमेंट व्हिच इज the major um, source of support to the uterus to keep it in its uh, normal position the third ligament is the utrosacral ligament this is the ligament which is extending from the posterior aspect of the uh, uterus or from the posterior surface of the uterus and then it goes uh, posteriorly and it gets attached this utrosacral ligament it gets uh, attached to the um, to the anterior wall of the sacrum okay anterior surface of the sacrum ya anterior wall of the sacrum ke sath jaake ye fibers jo hai wo attach ho jate hain and they are responsible for giving the posterior support to the uterus so in this way we have seen that the uterus is being supported by various different ligaments from its anterior aspect the side walls of the uterus and the posterior surface of the uterus all of them they have got rich ligament and support which are basically uh, uh, formed by the modification of the deep fascia that is the endopelvic fascia along with that they also contain some of the fibrous tissue and they also contain some of the smooth muscle content inside them these ligaments they have got some fibrous content in them they also have got some smooth muscle uh, content in them so these are the two uh, main sources major sources of support one is the normal angulation which is being maintained by the uterus and the uh, ligamentous support to the uterus okay now if there is anything which is happening inside this these uterine support major cause is called they call it multi gravidity the female when becomes uh, pregnant many times and she delivers upper uh, vagina or she undergoes normal vaginal delivery that produces a continuous pressure over the vagina and over the walls of the pelvis which leads to the laxity of the muscles which leads to the laxity of the uh, ligamentous support and this is the reason why the uterus it descends down from its normal position and it descends through the vaginal orifice and it comes out ultimately in anterior so there are uh, four basically degrees of the uterine uh, prolapse first degree is just the descent of the uh, cervix through the vagina sirf vagina cervix ka jo jo cervical or sagittal jo cervix ki opening hai into the vagina it just it descends out uh, that is called as the first degree of the um, uh, of the uterine uh, prolapse the second degree is the one when the entire cervix it gets descent through the introitus that is an opening through the vaginal orifice the third degree is that the cervix is located now located outside the introitus and fourth degree which is uh, also called as the uh, prosedentia the fourth degree is called as the prosedentia in which all of the uterus is coming out through the introitus that is the opening through the vaginal orifice so first degree is just the the center of the cervix through the vagina second degree when the cervix is coming out through the introitus opening third degree is the descent of the cervix the entire cervix is outside the introitus and fourth degree is prosedentia when the entire uterus is coming out through the introitus opening so these are the four degrees of the uterine prolapse and uh, the etiology it could be um, hereditary in nature they could be family history a positive family history which produces the congenital weakness of the muscles of the pelvic uh, floor uh, those subjects who are uh, into a world of carrying heavy weight heavy weight jo carry karte hain unke andar bhi problem hoti hai that the pelvic floors as the age advances the pelvic floor muscle they get um, uh, you know uh, they get weakened they get relaxed 
and ultimately that leads to the uterine collapse. Uh, third cause, it could be the postmenopausal atrophy, atrophy of the muscles by smooth muscles and which are surrounding the uh, vagina, which are making up the basically to the sara uterus to support the pelvic walls are they these uh, muscles they undergo atrophy after the menopause and this happens because uh, there is a sudden drop down of the level of estrogen and estrogen is the hormone which is basically responsible for making the healthy uterus and healthy cervix in vagina so post menopausally there is a sudden drop down of the levels of estrogen which leads to the atrophy of the muscles which are making up the pelvic wall and finally, multi gravity, as I told you, the uh, case that, that was also showing that the patient that was or the affected in English work was a multi gravita. She has given birth to 10 uh, children and then all were delivered for vaginally. So, definitely, that gives uh, that, that produces a, a drastic impact to the, uh, to the support of the uterus and ultimately it can lead to the uterine collapse. The treatment options for that is definitely prevention is better than cure. In any medical condition, prevention is definitely better than cure. And how that can be prevented, these conditions can be prevented by doing the physical therapy. And there are pelvic floor exercises which are called as the Kegels exercises. Kegels exercises are basically the pelvic floor exercises. They are done to in order to uh, improve the overall strength of the structures which are located inside the pelvic cavity. Then in this condition, it takes place some of the uh, females, either because of some medical conditions or moderate conditions of the those uh, surgery is not possible. So there is a conservative approach which is being applied, and this is called as the pasari, the pasari treatment. Vaginal pasaries are being applied, and what is a pasari? Pasari is basically a device. It's a ring-shaped structure which is inserted into the vagina, and that uh, within the vaginal orifice, it is responsible for holding up the pelvic organs inside the. Uh, inside the pelvic cavity at their normal position. So this is Pazari, is a, uh, it's a ring light device, it's made up of uh, uh, polypropylene material, plastic material, which keeps the 